Hello everybody, welcome to the Comic Game Movie Show. My name is Deshaun and today I am here to review the latest and I say latest, but like this character surprisingly doesn't have a ton of animated features, which is the new Superman show. It's an animated Superman show called My Adventures with Superman. Now it's on Adult Swim, which is so weird for this show to be placed considering it's it's pretty standard shit. Now it's kind of like the animation style for this version of, is, I don't want to say, I don't, I wouldn't consider it an anime, but like there are certain instances in it that are very anime. I would pretty much, I would really equate the animation style to something like, like, um, Invincible. Something like that. That That's kind of what I would equate it to. This is equated to, in many ways, it looks like Invincible in terms of its animation style. So much so that, you know, you could almost think of it as a, PG version of Invincible. I don't know why it's on Adult Swim. That is still a, like a weird place to put it, but like Adult Swim, like you know, they don't always place the most hardcore shit on Adult Swim. But I still think that's a weird place. Or you can watch it on Max. But either way, this is the newest super, um, super animated Superman show. I'm a huge fan, especially when any of the big um, comic book characters get an animation show because I grew up on that shit. I grew up on Batman animated series. I grew up on X Men an the animated series. Grew up on Spider-Man the Animated Series. And yes, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, all that shit. Loved it. You know, Gargoyles, side note. But I loved all that shit. So whenever one of these superheroes get one, like there's one, there's a Batman one coming out called Kate, Kate Crusader being made by the guys who did the original Batman one. And I'm looking very much forward to that when that comes out. Because they say that shit's supposed to be hardcore. So I can't wait for that to come out. But this Superman, like, I will just say, like, it is a breath of fresh air the way they approach it. First of all, some people are gonna hate this an this animated um, this animated um, show off the bat just off of. It is a very diverse. I mean, Jimmy Olsen's black, Lois Lane's Asian. There's gonna be a lot of people who got a problem with that. Perry White has been black for quite a while now. You know, I don't know about the comics because I don't really read DC comics like talking about. Now, I'll watch some of the animated stuff, but Perry White, I feel like Perry White's been black for a while, so I don't know how many people feel about that, but it is a very, very diverse cast, and the way, and it's not handled, you know, like, making a big deal about it, but it is, you know, like, because, like, Jimmy Olsen is clearly voiced by, you know, a black actor, and, the, the, you know, the energy he brings in Lois, Lois, you know, you, you, you can't tell, but, like, you can tell they modeled her after an Asian actress, but I digress. The story, this, this entire story is about, it's not so much his origin story, but it is the younger days of Clark. I mean, you, the first episode starts with him just getting to uh, Metropolis from, you know, coming from Smallville and him and, and I'm glad Jimmy Olsen is in this too, because the Jimmy Olsen and Superman relationship has been kind of, um, I'm not going to say degraded over the years, but it has kind of taken a hit over the years, like in the comics and for years and a lot of animated stuff, him and Jimmy, like, Jimmy, Clark, and Lois, like, they were a trio. They were together. You know, they were out here hustling, trying to get these stories. Also, a nice touch is that Clark's a real reporter. Clark really has passion for this. Often, you feel like when you're reading a Superman comic, or you just watch Superman, you kind of just, like, it, like, you never really get the sense that he's an actual reporter. Like, you're like, what does he even do at this place other than save Lois Lane? You know what I mean? You feel like he's only there for her. Whereas here, it's like, no, he went to school for this. He met this guy named Jimmy Olsen, and they became friends, and they studied for this. Like, no, this is what he wanted to do. And he ran into Lois, fell for her instantly, but, you know, but he but he is an actual reporter. He actually is good at this, and he actually wants to do this. He's going to, you know, investigate and find the true stories. So it's very cool to see that they actually made that a part of his character. Because, like I say, it's something that's never really played up in like any Superman thing is the reporter aspect of the character and it's it's, it's very it's, it's nice to see them it's one of the first times I've ever seen them actually play up that aspect of his character also the romance between him and Lois is instantaneously will they won't they it instantly they set that whole feeling up of we want them to be a couple you feel the vibes off of them and like like I say um also sometimes I don't like Lois Lo um, Lois Lane. It depends on how she's written. Lois Lane is a character who's been around for 
60, 70 years? I mean, it's, it's been a long time. She's a very old character. She's the original love interest. She's the original superhero love interest. It all started with Lois Lane. Like, Mary Jane, all that shit. Mary Jane, Pepper Potts, and all that shit. Before any of that shit, before Catwoman, before any of that, there was Lois Lane. She's the OG love interest. And often she is just written like an annoying damsel in distress. Often. Like, most of the time, like ninety nine point nine percent, like ninety. Okay, now that's a lie because she's been changed up over time. Like sometimes, like she can kick ass and whatnot, which I like that. I like if Lois can fight because, good lord, girl, like I'm just like sometimes they make it seem like she's just like glass and like he just has to save her every five seconds, and she's kind of annoying in that way because she talks this big game and puts herself in positions where she needs to be saved after talking some shit. And that used to always annoy me about her because that was some versions of the character. Now, like I say, some other versions of the character actually can kick some ass. You know, she can handle some fucking thugs. You know, maybe she, maybe when the supervillains show up, she needs help. But she can handle some thugs. Um, and often, you just, it's, we, often the relationship happens too fast. Like, that's the one thing I hated about Man of Steel. I, I've gone on about this for, for, a, for a very long um, few years now. Is The one thing I hated about the Lois and Clark relationship and Man of Steel was, it just happened so suddenly. It happened suddenly, it wasn't very well worked, it just, it was, it felt like it had to happen because sometimes me and, I kind of make fun of this in any movie I'm watching, any movie or show, and it ruins every movie and show once you start thinking of it like this. When you point out the two most attractive people, female and male and, male and female, and you just go, well, they're going to be together because they have to be together because they're the two most attractive people on screen, so of course they're going to be together. Like, and like, once you realize that, and you realize that when you're watching, especially when you're watching cheap-ass movies, once you realize that, it kind of like, you kind of just like, oh, oh, well, yeah, it's going to happen. And that's the vibe it felt in Man of Steel. It was like, well, they're Lois and Clark, so of course they have to be together. It didn't feel authentic. It didn't feel earned. It didn't feel organic. Here... It feels organic because in the comics and most for the most part, most renditions of these characters, Lois and Clark don't just fall in love right off the bat. No, it's a progressive thing of them working together, of them, you know, of the cat, of him debating telling her and not telling her and all that. Like, it's a whole fucking process before they ever get together. And I didn't like it, Man of Steel, that they skipped all that. So here, in this animated show, you can already tell how they're going to play it. They both sort of like each other. Jimmy's fucking with them both, by the way. Jimmy's fun. Jimmy is the comedic relief of the, of the group. He's the fun. He's the energetic one. He's the one who's, like, talking to crazy shit and conspiracies and shit. You know, so Jimmy's fun in this. But he, he obviously sees that they both like each other. And he just keeps on fucking with both of them. And neither one of them wants to admit it. But, so you can already tell where this is going. But you can tell it's going to be a long, it's going to be a progressive thing of, of it adding up to them getting together. So already they've captured the Lois and Clark relationship. Great stuff with him and his parents as well. They really captured that. Um, it seems like the Krypton stuff is going to be even more over the top since it's an animated form. So I'm very excited for that. They, like I say, they really haven't shown their hand. We haven't seen Alex Luthor. We, we haven't heard of from No Dark Side. We, Zod didn't even showed up. Though they have pretty much hinted, without saying that Zod's probably going to be the main villain of this season. Like what the season's leading to is Zod, because he's having nightmares and shit about Zod. But it is also one of the cool things seeing him at the beginning, seeing him learn all his superpowers. I mean, in the first two episodes, he doesn't even know how to use his um x-ray vision he doesn't he doesn't know how to use his x-ray vision he doesn't know how to use his um heat his heat vision often often there are certain things he already knows like before he ever even gets you know to metropolis because he used a lot of those powers while he was in smallville but here he genuinely has no idea what the fuck he's doing he genuinely is just figuring this shit out also something they did here and i'm and I'm not gonna even going to say this, you know, this might be crazy to say, they did this better than any other rendition of Superman. I'm talking comic book, movie, video game. Which is often one of the big things with Superman is that it makes absolutely no sense that no one wouldn't know he's Clark Kent. He's, he doesn't hide his face. Like, even the Flash does this weird thing where he's moving his head so fast that it looks like his face is blurring. So you can't actually see him because he's moving his head, he's like he's fucking with his facial molecules or some shit and he's like they're moving so fast that you can't see his face even the flash tries even batman you come up with something 
I mean, Wonder Woman. Uh, well, so most of that Wonder Woman doesn't even have modern Wonder Woman doesn't even have a secret identity. So I don't even, you know, whatever. Neither does Aquaman. Modern Aquaman doesn't have a secret identity either. But Superman, we're supposed to believe that him simply taking off his glasses is that's it. That's change it. But they actually go through the effort of like really making you believe that you know people wouldn't notice it because Clark changes his voice he changes his voice the way his posture his the his like um the way he handles himself he has a confidence to him that he doesn't have when he's when he's just regular old Clark like and he, he plays it perfectly he's kind of a cl klutz when he's Clark he kind of has a higher pitch and his tone, even though he's a big dude still, he has a higher pitch to his tone. He's, you know, he's not, not stuttering, but he's like, every word kind of comes with a lack of confidence. But when he's Superman, he's standing tall, his posture's different, his hair slicked back. He's got that fucking confidence, swagger thing going. It's like, you know what? If I knew Clark, and I knew him as this shy, nebbish, you know, not doing too much, kind of high, high pitch voice like nervous dude I even if I thought even though they look very similar it's a I would buy that just from his demeanor his stature the way he's holding handling himself the way his hair is back and whatnot I would buy that no that you might not recognize We'd be like that can't be the same guy because their demeanors are so different so this is the first time I've actually bought the whole that's not Clark thing because he because he completely acts differently at least demeanor wise when he's Superman, which also makes sense because he's free, right? It's kind of the Spider-Man thing a little bit with um with um Peter, where Spider-Man is like Peter being able to be free and say all the crazy shit and you know be completely witty and all that shit that he wants to be that he isn't when he's just regular old Peter. And in a way, that's what Superman is to Clark: is he can be free, he can be the confident dude that is inside. Now the vibe you get is he's not doing this on purpose; he's just naturally doing this and it's like eventually he'll realize he can be that guy as Clark too he doesn't just have to be you know, be that as Superman but I digress the voice cast does, does a great job I love the animation they haven't like I said they haven't gotten into any of the big villains so far but three episodes in I'm enjoying it I think this is going to be a big winner for um another winner for DC animation and I can't wait to see more. But anyways, thank you guys for joining the Comic Movie Show. Please remember like, subscribe, and I can't, oh shoot, I almost forgot to give a rating. I give it a 9 out of 10. A 9 out of 10, honestly, there's no complaints about this show. I like the characters, I like the renditions of the characters, I like the trio, because they really feel like a fun little friend of reporters trio. I like the feeling of Perry White and him just yelling at them for five seconds. Like I say, animation's crisp, action's crisp. I really love the Lois and Clark relationship already, and I love the different dynamic that they've taken with Clark and what they're doing with Superman, and that you really can't tell the difference between Clark and Superman, because this was something no other fucking movie slash show or comic has done. So thank you guys for joining the Comic Movie Show again. Please do like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.